Good evening everyone, time for another silver update. I've done some adjustments to my mic, I've had some complaints about mic noise, so hopefully this is going to be a little bit better, so we'll use this as a test run. Um, I got my chart together and before I could get the update going with my lines, trend lines, breakout lines, etc., we just uh, blew through everything and we're running into new highs so I'm gonna walk through the lines I've drawn and then we'll go to the close-up view to see what we're doing right now but you can see back I've drawn a resistance line here about 42 you can see we did our normal break test back up another one here a little bit fuzzier but breakout test back up We've got another one here, breakout. This one, the test wasn't very good of a test, but we got another break here and then a test, and now we're rallying. And I drew my line here. It's not quite straight, but you can see we were looking at the next line, and then all of a sudden, boom, here, I'm going to go close up. We just blew through that. So we're now entering into new highs at 45. 52. Let's go in closer to the tick chart. We're at 45.50. So we're on our way towards 46. Looking very strong. We had a very interesting reaction today. Not really going to talk about the news related to this, it's anyone's guess it's really pretty much irrelevant anymore you just watch it drop it drops like a rock and in the past it would drop and then keep dropping but recently it just drops it's, it can't even really do an inner day drop it's, it's just the buyers are jumping on it so quickly let's throw up a volume chart although those are very unreliable let's just see yeah so you can see it dropped here really hard and then just a whole bunch of people came in and bought it and then a whole bunch of people did something on the close we can't really tell what they did because the price didn't react but a whole bunch of people did something so we've just got a runaway bull market and everybody's busy calling the top and as I said there's just no top in sight I did call $40 was one of my calls as an intermediate top. You can see we blew through it and then corrected back to it and then just took off. So I was thinking we'd get a correction at 40. We really didn't. We got just the most minor of correction from 42 to 40. That's only a 5% correction. So we really haven't seen a correction in this market for a long, long, long time. And that's causing a lot of people to call it a bubble, call it overbought, call it just anything. I mean, there are people coming out of the woodwork who are telling you that this market has run too far, too fast. We had a article by Jimmy, an interview by Jimmy Rogers, and Jimmy was saying that he's worried that if we run straight to triple digits, we're going to have a big crash. I don't I, I don't get me wrong. I'm probably one of the biggest Jimmy Rogers fans on the face of the planet. But if you research the topic, and I'll just leave it to you. If you're serious about it, you'll go find the facts. But if you research Jimmy Rogers and Silva, you're, you'll find out that Jimmy has been mysteriously mum on the topic of silver. And I'll, I'll leave that for you to figure out why you think that's the case and if that's the case. I invite you to get a copy of Hot Commodities, which is one of Jimmy's bestsellers, and try to figure out why silver's not mentioned there. And Jimmy's not one of, is not the only one that's been kind of mysteriously mum about silver. A lot of you follow Bob Chapman and Jim Willie and some others that have been out 
of the country for some time for fear of various things, but they're apparently still afraid to talk about silver. So be that as it may, you'll have to draw your own conclusions. I don't put a lot of stock in Jimmy hedging himself about silver. Pretty much all he said was, if we go straight to 100, then we're going to have a correction. Well, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I think, hey, we could go straight to 100 from here. And, okay, we go back to 70. There's a 30% correction. Oh, we could have a 50% correction back to 50. So, yeah. He didn't really say that much by saying that. So, wanted to get back to the issue of the fundamentals because, as I pointed out yesterday, you cannot ride a bull if you're not convinced of the fundamentals because the bull's going to throw you off. You're going to get scared. It's going to rise too fast. You're going to try to take your profits and get back in. And you can see there haven't been too many places to get back in. The one we had today, I mean, let's look at it. This was a quick dip. We're talking 45, 40 down to 44 18 that's a buck 20 and that sucker just came right back at fast and here we go we're we're taking off again to the upside i think we're going to 46 i think i was probably wrong i think we're going straight to 50 or it looks like this market wants to go right to the nominal high and i want to use that to segue into a chart i pulled up this is a fairly famous chart and this is the site it's at, Gold Speculator. I'm actually not going to use that, so we'll close that out. But I'm going to go to a enhanced image I used uh, that I got from... I just downloaded the image and enhanced it in Paint because it wasn't big enough. So this is a big, big, big long term. This is a 600-year silver chart. Now, the first thing you want to understand about this chart is it's denominated in 1998 dollars. Now that's very important because as you go back you have to do a reverse inflation adjustment and as you go forward you have to do an inflation adjustment. So your key pivot point and by the way it's not too far from this point that you see here. This all-time low marked on this chart is 1992 at four dollars and seventy three cents so that's very near to the actual nominal low I I think I remember buying silver for under four bucks correct me if I'm wrong but I'm pretty sure I picked up junk silver for under four dollars but anyway this nominal low that we have in 1992 is as close as you're gonna get to the true low that we had. So 1998 to 1992 is, is close enough that we're just going to call it even. So let's examine this chart. This is a long, long, long-term chart. The first thing I wanted to point out is that I've told you before that as we're in a bull market, and we're at 45.71 now, as we're in a bull market, you want to buy the dips and not sell the rallies just accumulate it so what's interesting about this chart is that if you look here we've got this inflation climax hunt brothers attempt to corner the market high here and actually if you chart this chart if you drew your trend lines here, and this is roughly 1464 or so, and draw a trend line down through 1764, and draw your trend line down through 1979, you'll find that this did not penetrate this line. So actually, believe it or not, if you go back far enough, we're still in a bear market for silver. So those of you who say well we need to take profits well I guess go ahead and take your profits now because I found a reason for you to do so because we're in a bear market but that's 
that's kind of tongue in cheek. But anyway, so this is an interesting point here. We want to determine with a downtrending trend line where do we actually break out of this bear market? Well, you can see we hit here an inflation adjusted 1998 dollars. We hit about, is that $70? Okay. So I want to point out another tool, kind of handy dandy tool that is out there for you to look at. And this is actually provided by the Federal Reserve Bank. And it's a inflation adjustment tool. This is the Minneapolis Fed, but you can go to just about any Fed, find this tool. So we want to adjust ourselves for this tool because it's a 1998 base. So we know that inflation adjusted terms in 1998, the peak was roughly $70. So Let's go ahead and plug these in and say if in the year 1998 we purchased goods or serv services for $70, then in the year 2011 we would calculate that on an inflation adjusted basis they need to be $94.78. So what that tells us is to maintain this trend, in other words, to spike top to this line before we correct before we correct on the inflation adjusted chart we need to hit ninety four seventy eight now you have to remember this is the feds inflation adjustment now I don't know what inflation adjustment they used on this. I would suspect the CPI and the CPI is suspect <laughs> to say the least. So let's just do a little adjustment to our index or our calculator to compensate for that because we know this is Fed numbers and you can't trust them. So let's just say the Fed's off by about half. So we don't have that ability in this tool, so instead we'll just take the number of years and kick them back. So we've got 13 years between now and then. So I think the Fed's off probably by half. So let's just kick it back another 13 and see what we get. So we'll just say we're going from 1985 and kick another 13 years on here. and we get $143. So my contention is this, that anywhere between 90 something dollars and $143, we will have actually broken out into a bull market. In other words, we have a bull market confirmation in the long-term downtrend of the price of silver. So just to give you an idea of how undervalued silver is, if you're really honest about it on a long, long, long-term basis, you really can't say we have yet even entered a bull market until we see 90 to $150. So that's just an idea of how undervalued this commodity is. It's so undervalued that your mind can't really even get around the fact that it has to go through 50, its nominal high. It has to go through 90, its incorrectly adjusted inflation high. It has to go through 143, its correctly inflation adjusted high. And then it has to start rising from there to get a breakout on inflation adjusted terms to just start rising. So really this bull market just starts at about $143 an ounce and then we'll see if we have a real bull market at that point we're we're gonna move from here probably to 50 and then move 
down in a correction or higher probably run very quickly to 75 or triple digits and then get a nice correction maybe 20 30 percent and then we need to get to 140 and then we're going to see whether we have a real historical bull market and we go into the 200s and 300s and 400s and then we really start to move so we'll talk to you next time